This is a case of a 36-year-old male who was referred to us for the favor of EUS guided cystogastrostomy for a large pseudocyst secondary to an alcoholic acute pancreatitis. As you can see here, our scope is sitting in the D1, D2 junction and I'm seeing the entire length of the bile duct. The CBD does not appear dilated as labeled here. MPD, the pancreatic duct, does not appear dilated either, which were traced right up to the ampulla of water. We wanted to rule out any biliary etiology of his acute pancreatitis and therefore gallbladder was evaluated as you can see here. The gallbladder looks distended but without any evidence of stone, sludge or imaging microliths. This confirms our finding that this patient had history of alcohol intake followed by which a massive episode of pancreatitis. Patient has been having this pseudocyst for over last 8 months and has been complaining of pain off and on. Here we are measuring the entire pseudocyst, you can see. is measuring almost 10 centimeters in size by about 11 centimeters. So you can imagine it's a very large pseudocyst and this kind of large pseudocyst in the body and tail of pancreas are likely to cause some gastric bulge. However, the intervening vessels we are focusing on, as you can see the gastric wall layers and the common wall of the pseudocyst, we are looking for pseudoaneurysms or abnormal vessels which could come in the way of our puncture. It's our policy at Endoscopy Asia to perform EUS guided pseudocyst drainage for the last 10 years. Bulging pseudocyst can also be managed without the need or help of EUS but if you have EUS as your support we feel we haven't experienced a single case in the last 10 years of inadvertent bleeding secondary to an attempt to drain a pseudocyst because of endoscopic ultrasound guidance. So here we are using a linear echoendoscope we will make sure the puncture tract is not having any abnormal vessels. This is fairly a straightforward case because it has some bulge on the stomach. However, I am magnifying the image to see the common wall with a color Doppler. And we have demonstrated that there are no abnormal vessels or pseudoaneurysm in the tract of our intended puncture. After the assessment of the common wall where we are likely to enter the pseudocyst, we would like to position our scope in such a way. Again, the color Doppler signal was switched on to make sure that our entry point is absolutely safe. Non-bulging pseudocyst can be also approached in a similar fashion. And here you can see picture in picture of the lesion. There are different types of techniques which we can use. Here we are using a dedicated needle knife cystotome like device which we will 
cauterize under the endoscopy and endosonography guided puncture with a cautery you can see I made an entry and you can see the linear echoendoscope on fluoroscopy once the cautery is applied the inner catheter which is about 6 French in diameter enters the pseudocyst and then the guide wire is pushed you can see the EUS balloon as well and now we are pushing our 10 French cystotome device and with the help of cautery we will enter into the pseudocyst cavity by applying endocut gently pushing the cautery pedal once we have entered the pseudocyst on endoscopy evaluation as well as on fluoroscopy evaluation with the 10 French catheter we ensure proper coiling of the guide wire into the pseudocyst due to large working channel of 3.7 millimeter of echoendoscope we can facilitate up to 10 French device passing through the working channel of the echoendoscope. Proper coiling of wire is ensured and this is one step EUS guided cystogastrostomy that we are demonstrating. Once our wire is secured, we switch over to complete endoscopy view such as what we would do with a duodenoscope. Here we are passing a 6 mm balloon. We evaluated on endosonography that the contents of the pseudocyst are fairly clear. The aspirate of the pseudocyst fluid was also not turbid. And therefore, we decided to dilate with 6 mm balloon at 780 m pressure. You can also appreciate the balloon of the EUS scope tip, which allows us to anchor along with and it gives us support when we are doing intervention with the elevator of the echoendoscope. Once the balloon is deflated, you will see some fluid oozing out from the opening, which is fairly large. It's our policy to leave double pigtail stents, either 8.5 French or 10 French double pigtail stents, along with nasocystic catheter, whenever we have very turbid or infected pseudocysts. However, as we can see here, the fluid is fairly thin and not turbid. We decided to go ahead and put a 10 French, this is a 10 French double pigtail, 10 centimeter stent across the pseudocyst into the stomach. As you can see, it is draining freely. We can see on endosonography before we took out the stent in place as two parallel lines. And within 24 hours, this patient had complete resolution of the pseudocyst.